How will this shutdown fight end? It's hard to know without hearing directly from congressional negotiators in both parties. So now we turn tonight to my exclusive guest, Republican Congressman Roger Marshall from Kansas. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight, Congressman. Ari, happy new year. Happy new year. Uh, Donald Trump promised Mexico would pay for the wall. Why do you think he completely failed at that goal? You know, I think I'm going to stay focused on what Donald Trump's theme has been from day one, is that border security is a priority. There are several ways he described we can do it, and I'm staying there focused as well, looking for a way to get that accomplished. Well, let's look at what he said he would do if uh, this failure occurred, which, as you know, it has. Mexico is not funding the wall, but here's what he said he would do if he couldn't get them to fund the wall. Take a look. Mexico, Sean, is going to pay for the wall. You know, these, these politicians come up and they say, you don't really mean Mexico is going to pay. We will have Mexico pay for that wall. Sure, and, and you know what? If I'm wrong about this, you're going to all come back. We'll have another meeting and I'll apologize to you. He was wrong. He didn't apologize. Why are so many uh, House Republicans, including yourself, supporting him shutting down the federal government because he couldn't get Mexico to pay? I mean, by this logic, shouldn't Mexico's government be shut down right now? Ari, I guess we're kind of on different pages here. I think we have to talk about priorities. And what I believe is that national security is a huge priority. We have more deaths than crime created because of a poor southern border than problems coming out of the Middle East right now. So I think we all need to acknowledge that this is a huge problem and we want to fix the problem. But what we need to stop doing is looking at everything in little silos. And look at all these problems together, the challenges that we have in this country, but this is about and try to the solve wall. them all. I understand what you're saying. And, and and you and others have talked about that, but this, he shut the government down because he couldn't get Mexico to pay for the wall. That, that, do you disagree with that's why the government's closed today? Uh, I, I disagree with the premise. Well, the, why the president shut the government down is because border security is such a priority to us. He's given Congress every chance to fix this problem. We've had several good solutions that we voted on, but we couldn't get them across the finish line. So I think the big goals, I think the goal that we can agree upon is that national security is important. Opening the government back up is a priority as well. And fixing this broken immigration system we have is a priority as well. There has to be a way that we can fix all of these together. Are you receptive to reopening the government without funding the wall? I think that's a non-starter. I think that anyone would realize that we would lose all of our leverage if we do that, uh, that we need to look at the problems in total, not in isolation. I think that the president has compromised. He's came down from $25 billion to $5.7, and it's now time for Congress to step up and do our job. And I'm, I'm curious, as you know, one thing we hear a lot about, and I'm happy to have you on the program to discuss it with you directly, we hear a lot about how Trump has really moved Republicans like yourself uh, and changed their minds or their positions on these issues. Why did you change your mind to embrace the wall more uh, than you used to. No, I think I've always been in favor of border security. From day one, uh, yes, I've embraced sir, but I'm border asking, security. We, we've got a closed government over the wall. You shifted on the wall. Is that because Donald Trump changed your mind? Or why, why now is the wall, as you just said on air, worth shutting down the government over? No, I've always been in favor of border security. A border wall was one way to do that. From day one, I've been in favor of border security. And I've always said that there's many ways to fix the problem. There are places that need a wall, that need a barrier. There's other places that, that we need more boots on the ground. Well, Congressman, you say from day one, let me read what you said in 2017. I'm not sure a wall is the best way to do it. I don't even know if it's even feasible. Uh, which contradicts what you just claimed. Can you admit there that you did go from saying it's not even feasible to now saying it's worth shutting the government down over? What changed? No, I think it's very dangerous to take an isolated quote. If you would have taken the whole paragraph, of course, we can't quite remember where I was when we said that, but I've always said that border security was the priority. I've never thought it was feasible to do 2,000 miles of wall. I was willing to consider it. We've built about 700 miles of wall. So want to call it. I think that you're really getting down in the way down in the needles in the haystack here instead of saying focused on the problem and what we agree upon well, that we want to solve this problem. I, I appreciate you being here. You're, you're calling it the haystack. I would call it accurate uh, quotes from you, which are relevant to you as a legislator. Uh, which you're now taking out of context. You're taking it, them totally out of well, context. Sir, what, what about it is out of context? 
I said that fixing a border, a, a border wall could work, but I didn't think it was feasible. I was willing to listen to that. I've said all along, border security was the priority. There was many ways to fix it. A border wall was part of the solution. We know for sure that in, in places where we put up fences, border walls, it's improved it by 90%. So I've always thought they were part of the solution. Let me ask you something that's not so much about your record, but about the leadership uh, of the House, which of course has changed. It's changed to Pelosi, but also uh, Speaker Ryan, the former Speaker Ryan has left. Uh, but it is odd for many people, I wonder whether you and I might agree on this point, it is odd for many people to watch that Donald Trump and the Republican Party controlled all levers in Washington, House and Senate, for two years and never passed this wall funding. And now the moment the Democrats are in charge, it's become a priority. Uh, if this were so important, why do you think uh, Donald Trump, the president, and the congressional leaders you work with in the Republican Party didn't just get this funded earlier? All right, don't you think you're being a little bit disingenuous when you realize that we needed 60 votes on the Senate? The House uh, has passed funding several times. We were always told to kick it down the road, and finally we're making a stand here. So we can't, you say we controlled all the levers, but we never really control the supermajority we needed in the Senate. I understand that point. I mean, as you know, A, there's ways to do it. Well, I don't want to get too deep in the haystack, but there are ways to do it through a reconciliation that are a bare majority vote. There's also the frequency, and again, for your now, we do, we do care and want your perspective here. Uh, compare it to, say, Obamacare, where there were so many votes, dozens and dozens of votes and pressure uh, to try to drive that forward, uh, over 60 uh, by one count. Uh, border wall votes far fewer, uh, under a tenth, excuse me, under a fifth of that, uh, 10 votes roughly. And so I wonder, is, is that part of the problem, or do you basically think uh, this is House Republicans holding firm, but Senate Republicans never found a way to do it through their rules? Yeah, I think that first of all, sometimes we took a, what I thought was a relatively simple problem and we made it complicated. So the first go around, we piled a lot of things onto the Christmas tree when we tried to fix the problem. So when we tried to fix border security, we tried to simultaneously fix some of the immigration issues. And I think if we would have done it a little bit simpler, that we could have passed it. So certainly I'll take responsibility, but we had two solid votes on this uh, that were real close in passing on the House side. I don't think it ever made it to the Senate floor that I wrote. I recall. Uh, and so, Congressman Marshall, that is a perspective. We talked to folks uh, throughout this shutdown about why it's happening and where we're headed. And I have to say, I really appreciate you coming on and taking the questions sure. directly. I hope you'll come back. No, oh, it's my pleasure. Happy New Year to everybody. Happy New Year. Thank you. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.